All right, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to go over how to control lighting to have a synchronized light show with your music using DMXs. If you haven't watched the previous videos on how to set up a click track, backing track, and how to send MIDI data to your MIDI controlled devices, the links are in the description down below. This is going to be an introduction to lighting using DMXs. It's up to you to use this information to get better at it. This isn't going to be really in depth, it's just gonna be used to get you started. If you are completely new to lighting, don't know how to connect lights or understand what DMX is or how to control lights, check the description down below. Um, I'm gonna post links to two different video series I found on the internet that's gonna explain it way better than I can. This video is gonna focus on how to use the software within Logic. It's really easy under to understand for a beginner, but if you're absolutely completely new to lighting, check the description down below. So DMXs is a really cool software. It connects to your computer via USB. You install and register the program and it's pretty simple to use. Some people do have a problem, including myself, getting it to recognize your computer to recognize DMXs. I'm also gonna post a link down in the comments to where you can update the software. Depending on your computer, you might just need to have a more recent firmware update and then it should be able to connect to your computer. Anyway, so DMXs connects to your computer via USB and then it has inputs on the front for a five pin or a three pin DMX cable and you just connect those cables to your lights and run it from there. So how do we get it to work in Logic? So let's set up a new track. Uh, we're gonna do a software instrument and we're gonna do, after you've installed the software, you're gonna do instrument, AU instruments, DB AudioWare, and then DMXs. I don't think it matters if it's mono or stereo. All right, it's gonna look for your DMXs and it always says offline for a second and then it connects. Cool. So what we have here, it's just the same thing like any other DM, DMX lighting. You fade, move up your sliders, move down your sliders. Uh, you see, you know, channels one all the way to 520, or excuse me, 512. You can scroll through here and adjust those. The lights that I'm using are some simple to use Chave. I believe they're called Slim Par 64s, but uh, let me set this up really quick. Uh, they read eight channels of MIDI data each. So for example, the way that I have this set up, the one on the left, channel one is red, two is green, three is blue, four is amber, and then I'm not gonna mess with any of the other ones, eight is gonna be the master dimmer. And then the one on the right is the same idea, just starting on channel nine. So we're gonna have red, green, blue, so on and so forth. So I have the one on the left set to read on D001, so it's gonna take up channels one through eight, and then the one on the right is going to be D009, so it's gonna read from channels nine through 16. All right, so now we're gonna switch over to preset manager over here. You're gonna see this bank and preset. So what we're gonna do is your banks are going to be for each individual song. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a new one, and I'm gonna call it 01 song one C minus two. I'm gonna explain that in a minute, uh, why I do that. And then you're gonna do the next one, O2, song two, C sharp minus two. You can't do the sharp symbol for some reason, it gives you an error. And then I'm gonna do another one for song three, O3, song three, D minus two. The reason I do that is that sometimes DMXs will try to put this in alphabetical order or something, I'm not really sure, and all, the, all of my songs will be in a different order, but I've found that putting zero one will just keep it in the correct order. So that's what I started doing. I'm gonna explain this C minus two in a second. And then in preset, what we're gonna do is this is where we're going to create all the different parts within the song. So we'll have the intro, the verse, the chorus, the bridge, so on and so forth. So what I'm gonna do is this first one, everything is off. So the lights are off. So I usually do this on the first one. I'm gonna, and again, I'm gonna do the same idea. O one, I'm gonna call this blackout. And I'm gonna call that C minus two, which again, I will explain here in a minute. So you can see that the lights are off. Now for, say for the verse, I just want to have just the uh, red and green. Apparently it's a very Christmas verse. So I'm gonna go back to the preset manager. I'm gonna create a new preset over here. O2, verse, and I'm gonna call it C sharp minus two. And then let's say for the chorus, I want the blues to oscillate on and off, I don't know. Um, and I will post descriptions down here to uh, another YouTube video that'll explain how the oscillator works if you're not familiar with that with doing lighting. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna name that one, O3, chorus, D minus two. And now let's say for the bridge, I want them to stop 
oscillating and I want just these ones right here to oscillate as a triangle wave and to chase like that. Whoop. Let's do all the way up and a little faster. And we're gonna call that the bridge. Uh, one more thing to mention, DMXS does read whatever tempo you're mapped at. So you can see this is at 120. If I want to change the tempo within Logic, I move down to 111, see how it follows along with the tempo. That's a really cool feature, especially if you want things to blink to the music or something like that. All right, does that make sense? So we have pretty simple, we have a blackout, we have the verse, we have a chorus, and then we have a bridge. All right, so now how do you trigger each of these? So what we're gonna do, again, in this software instrument right here, I'm going to create some empty MIDI data. So the command click tool, pencil, command click to draw some empty MIDI data. And then I'm gonna open this up. So the first thing we have to do is the bank over here or your songs that's going to read on midi channel 15 all this in here is going to read on midi channel 15 and preset is going to read on midi channel 16. you can't change that unfortunately so any other midi devices that you have just make sure they're not on 15 or 16. so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set my cursor right here and i'm going to command click again down here in the editor and on c minus two it's going to i'm going to use that to select song one now this is where it gets a little bit confusing if you watch the other dmx's videos on their actual website they have two software instruments and then one ch set to channel 15 and one set to channel 16 with two different uh, dmx inserts on it i could not get that to work to save my life so this is how i found a workaround around it if you push d it'll load up this editor over here the event editor and what i'm going to do let's double click this so now you can see the note that i just created right here it's at c negative two and right now, well, it should come up on channel one, most likely when you put it in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move that so that it's up to channel 15. So now what that's gonna do is that as soon as the cursor passes that point, I'm gonna select a different song right now. As soon as it passes that point, it's going to load song one. See, it automatically selected that one. And then right here, right after that, I'm gonna do another note, again, on C sharp minus two. I'm gonna set this one to channel 16 so that it's collect selects the blackout and that's why I mark all of these so once you start adding you know a bunch of uh, you know you'll have a long list of of presets and songs it just it's just easier just to see the name of them so you don't have to count it just makes your life a thousand times easier so now that's how the song starts so then like right here at measure two I'm going to draw in C sharp minus two to load the verse and then make sure it's set to channel 16 then right here at measure three we're going to load the chorus, the shortest verse ever. And then right here at measure five, because we doubled the chorus, we're going to load D sharp minus two. So again, I'm going to go back over here. And if you watch, if you watch the cursor and watch the lights, you'll see that it'll load song one, then it'll load blackout, then verse, then chorus, and then bridge. So watch. Load song one, blackout, loads the verse, then it's going to load the chorus. And then once it crosses measure five, it's going to load the bridge. Make sense? And pretty, pretty basic. Again, it's up to you to get better on, you know, making these look cool. I mean, I just did some very, very basic ones to start just to show you how the software works. So here's the session. Um, if you didn't watch the previous videos on setting up click track and backing track uh, in a master session in Logic, uh, go back and watch those. The links are in the description below. But you can see here, you know, I have my DMXS channel right here. And then each part is going to sync up to the different parts of the song. So during Redshift, I'll have all my commands here. During Discovery, I'll have all my tracks here, so on and so forth. Again, this is a very introduction to it. It's not too hard to understand. You know, I'm, I'm very new to this when I did the first show with it. And then you just get better over time. Just uh, two pieces of advice. I would recommend if you get lighting fixtures, if they have battery powered lighting fixtures, Trust me, just go for those if you can afford it. These slim pars that I use, they're very nice for the price. I did end up buying the battery powered ones just because it makes it so much easier to set up. The other thing with running DMX cables, especially since this is usually used to control your own lighting, so many times you have to, you know, you have the 15 minute set changeover where the other band has to get all their stuff off and you have to put all your stuff on stage in 15 minutes. It takes forever to run those DMX cables from lighting to lighting. It if you use quite a bit. If you have two lights, it's probably not that big of a deal. But I do recommend there are these wireless DMX set up by Donner. So it's really easy. It just has this antenna that plugs in to the front 
of DM, uh, of the DMXs. So just like the three pin connector for your DMX cable. And then it has these dongles that you actually connect to the lights. So you don't have to run any cables, it's all wireless. If you can get that, I highly recommend it. It'll save you so much time, especially if you're trying to do those 15 minute setup and teardowns. I, I thought, especially with how cheap they were, they wouldn't work very well. I know there are other ones. I've never had a problem with them. I use the synchronized lighting shows with multiple bands and I've never had an issue with them. Now that I say that, I'm sure something will go wrong, but uh, I've had no problems with them. I hope that helped you guys. Again, it's very much an intro. There are other videos on how to do lights and how to do DMXs a little bit more, but I wanted to make this as part of of the video series. The last video is going to cover how to do projections uh, so you can have a screen synchronized to your music as well. So hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.